Let's talk about putting together a new Space Marine Battle Company or Task Force with an overview of collecting the Adeptus Astartes in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Space Marines and in this video I thought it would be good to update my start collecting guide for the faction given that we've just had a new codex come out and really quite a lot has changed from everyone's favourite boys in power armour. In the video we'll talk about why you might want to collect a force of bolter wielding superhumans in power armour, talk about some of the first things to plan out and look into, where to find the rules and some good options for purchasing the first models of which space marines have quite a lot to choose from, and finish up with a few ideas on expanding the army general gameplay and one example army list. Jumping straight into it, why might you want to collect space marines in the first place? I feel like in general space marines are pretty much almost synonymous with the setting of Warhammer 40k. If you've heard of the grim darkness of the far future then you've likely heard of space marines. They're very much the poster boys of the setting, mankind's greatest standard warriors, recruited in childhood with a gruelling training regimen involving a lot of genetic therapy and implantation of many superhuman organs to make them stronger, faster and tougher than any other men, and then fighting with the greatest arms and armaments that the Imperium can bring to bear, the Holy Bolter, and indomitable suits of ceramite power armour. The Space Marines were the ones that first led the Great Crusade of the Emperor across the stars, turning in on itself only once half of them fell to their machinations of chaos. In the current 40k setting they fight in somewhat monastic knightly chapters with their own personality, whether it's the grim Nordic themed Space Wolves from that ice planet of Fenris, or the cold and calculating gunnery experts of the Iron Hands declaring that the flesh is weak and trading it for masterful bionics wherever possible. When Space Marines go to war, it's typically to fight against some of humanity's greater foes. Their standard foot troops fight with bolters, chainswords, and generally aggressive shock tactics, hitting the enemy with rapid strikes to keep them constantly off balance and take down key targets of opportunity before moving on to the next. Most companies are flexible enough to fight with a number of different fighting styles, though, should the need take them. For collecting an army of them on the tabletop, model-wise the Space Marines are pretty well the best supported faction in the game, and it's not really by a close margin. Space Marines are the most popularly played army, and Games Workshop generally tends to release more Space Marine models as a result, perhaps drawing more people to the faction with newer and better supportive ranges. For a few examples of models in their lineup, here's an indomitable exo-armoured Space Marine Terminator on the top left, a fast attack Space Marine Outrider Biker on the top right, hitting home with twin bolt rifles on the bike and the chainsword for the rider, and Reboot Gillerman front and centre, Primarch of the Ultramarines, returned from ages past, and is currently Supreme Commander of the Imperial Forces at the moment. For perhaps a few slightly more exotic units, here's a Gladiator Lancer tank on the top left, a lot of their more modern vehicles have grav plate technology, bearing them aloft slightly. Then at the front there's a scouting infiltrator model there, he's a medic with the helix gauntlet, a grim and resolute skull mass space marine chaplain on the top right, spiritual leaders and morale officers of the chapters, and on the bottom right there's the jetpack equipped space marine inceptor, descending from the skies like a meteorite, spitting out death with twin assault bolters. There's really quite a lot more than that, they do have the best supportive range out of just about any army in the game, and just received a whole bunch of new miniatures from the Leviathan releases and their new codex drop, but the range is still somewhat divided into the Primaris and the Firstborn options, basically new and slightly older style Space Marines before GW started updating them. There are still quite a lot of examples left in the range of the Firstborn type squads, here's the Tactical Squad on the left, the Devastator Squad with the heavy weapons on the bottom right, and the Space Marine Whirlwind Artillery Tank on the top right. It feels kind of inevitable that sooner or later GW will gradually phase out most of these guys, hopefully replacing them with Primaris as they go but it does feel like these guys are facing a somewhat uncertain future. I'd certainly be a bit wary about getting into Space Marines and deciding to go down a heavily firstborn line, as each time the range is updated there's a good chance that more cuts might be made and other things taken out of production and no longer supported properly. Price-wise, for collecting the army, Space Marines are certainly one of the cheapest ways to play Warhammer 40k, as they're often kind of seen as somewhat the protagonist faction, Games Workshop does like to come out with a lot of discount boxes for them. Currently they've got a lot of options for combat patrol boxes that you can use to get a lot of Space Marines for fairly cheap. They feature in the starter sets and the recent Leviathan box, and just in general slightly more elite armies where you don't need as many models on the board tend to be a bit cheaper than the more hoardy style armies in Warhammer 40k. It does mean that over the years quite a lot of people wind up collecting a few space marines on the side just because they happen to have picked them up from one place or another. 
Gameplay-wise, their rules are now going to be featuring in Codex Space Marines, somewhat recently released at time of recording, and featuring a whole bunch of different attachments to field Space Marines in a number of their most iconic ways. With such a vast array of model choice, plus quite a lot of character for their different sub-factions that they have, Space Marines do have a lot of ways of making war, and you can play entire Space Marine armies that are almost entirely either ranged or melee focused, or go heavy on other styles of warfare like fighting from vehicles or infiltration and stealth tactics. For the most part they tend to be fairly elite, quite nice to play relatively aggressive with, and somewhat forgiving mechanics wise, as even your basic troopers have got fairly good armour and can usually handle themselves in combat somewhat with lesser foes, maybe meaning that it's just a little bit less catastrophic if they're out of position compared with other factions with very valuable troops that can deal a lot of damage but are really quite easy to kill. Their core mechanic is called Oath of Moment, and it allows you to nominate one unit from your opponent's army, and your army gets some big damage rerolls against them, meaning a Space Marine army can just be quite good at focusing down one important threat at a time, in the designated order of your choosing. For power in game, I think it's a bit early to say at time of recording whether or not they're going to hold their own against the other horrors out there in 40k. Initial impressions of the Codex looks like they're probably going to be fairly middling, though I do think that there's some options within the Codex that are looking very, very strong, and some that are going to be a lot weaker if you play around with certain detachments or unit types. With such a vast range and choice of options, I feel like Space Marines almost inevitably always have some things that are really quite weak, and usually at least a few options that tend to be far better than most. In any case, if you do choose to collect a Space Marine army, I'll be well aware of all the places that you can go to find more information about them, Reading the core codex isn't the worst place to start, that does get you a fair bit of background, lore and painting galleries, plus the actual rules for playing the models in game. If you want to mess around with rules and army lists, then you can take a look at Battlescribe and Warhopedia, they're unofficial rule sources that can allow you to view the rules for free. You could potentially proxy some models or try some games on Tabletop Simulator if you're into that to try out the army. And of course there's loads and loads of content here on YouTube, I've made a lot of Space Marines myself including a tier list and a codex overview video, and I'm going to be aiming to make videos on most of the units and their detachments. Elsewhere on YouTube you can find battle reports, painting guides and all sorts of lore, they are pretty much at the heart of the 40k universe, and you'll often find them featuring heavily in one way or another in a lot of people's content. Social media can definitely be a good resource as well, joining Astartes themed Facebook groups, discords and subreddits, and there's a lot of them available for some of the different chapters out there as well. Can be quite a nice way to ask some basic questions to a few like-minded hobbyists, and see what other people are talking about and interested in. Can just be a very good way to learn through a bit of osmosis. One decision that you could think about is whether or not you're going to choose to play one of the chapters from the Space Marine lore, or go with a chapter with a name and theme that you design, with your own heraldry on their armour. Chapters are the Space Marines' monastic fighting organisations, and at the moment they perhaps operate in a bit of a strange area in the 40k rules, their choice is a little bit significant for certain special characters or unique units that you can field alongside your army, though the core of the rules in Codex Space Marines can be used by any of the chapters, and any one of them can run any of the different detachments for example. These six are considered the more codex chapters out of the famous Space Marine Legions out there, slightly more adherent to the norms and functions of the Codex Astartes as laid out by Mr. Gilliman. From left to right we have Rabute Gilliman's own legion, the Ultramarines, with their combat doctrine focusing on tactical flexibility and having a fair few Roman type aesthetics. Next along are the fire-loving salamanders, destroying the enemy utterly with great gouts of flame. They're respected for their sheer might and their ability to craft some of the best weapons in the galaxy. We've got the somewhat Mongol-inspired White Scars, striking fast and loving melee combat, often fighting from the mechanical steeds of the Space Marine Outrider bikes. The mechanically augmented Iron Hands, often swapping their flesh for metal and tending to fight with cold and calculating ranged warfare, obliterating the enemy with massive firepower. The stalwart and yellow armoured Imperial Fists, guardians of terror and often famed for rigid bolted gun lines with massive fire discipline, defending the throne world against all comers. And finally the sneaky stealthy Raven Guard Sons of Korax, loving hit and run stealth warfare and striking from the shadows, often eliminating enemy commanders and hitting the enemy's weakest points, gradually picking them apart. Then we've got the more divergent chapters, these guys are basically space marines but plus a whole load of extra units as well, interesting little armies in their own right. They have their own index downloads that work alongside Codex Space Marines and basically get access to a few extra units, and in time they will have their own codexes come out in 10th edition as well. These are the tragic fallen heroes of the Blood Angels, fighting to ward against the Black Rage, 
the secretive and monastic dark angels very much embodying the warrior monks, and recently reunited with their Primarch Lionel Johnson as part of the Arcs of Omen narrative, the zealous crusading Black Templars, again very much warrior knights, but perhaps of a more aggressive nature, charging around the galaxy and purging the heretics and unclean, the Nordic and Viking themed space wolves, with perhaps a bit of an overfixation on wolf units, They've both got werewolf wolfen and also wolf riding cavalry in their ranks. And finally the spec op style death watch, the Imperium's elite xenos hunters, often striking in with teleport tactics and close range fire support kill teams to take down the foe. Finally as if that weren't quite enough space marines for you, there's plenty of famous successor chapters out there, offshoots of various of the first founding legions such as the blood ravens who are famous from dawn of war, and the imperial fist successor the crimson fist, notably holding out against the orcs on Rin's world under the leadership of Pedro Cantor. There's a ridiculous amount of these present in the lore, and you can very much come up with your own, with your own thematic heraldry and their way of getting things done. I've seen lots of very cool chapters made by different collectors. There's lots of options out there, plenty of people do choose to make their own, and plenty of people do choose to just go with one of the factions in the lore, and take great pride in representing their chosen chapter on the battlefield. If you're starting to get a rough sort of idea with which way you'd want to go for Space Marines and think about starting to mess around and plan out an army list, you could mess around with things like Battlescribe or potentially the Warhammer app and put together a couple of ideas for an example a 1000 point or 2000 point list, either trying to go for a more balanced Space Marine force that has a bunch of cool units that you like in, or maybe trying to take the collection one way or another, perhaps skewing towards a certain playstyle, either with your detachment choice or the unit rules. We'll talk about a few of the detachments later towards the end of the video, but they can push you in various different styles of play, and there's usually one that's at least roughly on the theme of each of the major Codex compliant chapters at least, that can give you a bit of a nudge towards their playstyle, even if you're not necessarily obligated to take that one if you collect any one chapter. You can absolutely just completely collect just for a thematic force from the lore, and not worry too much about gameplay, just build around the certain tactics that you'd expect your chapter to use, Maybe a very fast and hard hitting force of white scars with loads of bikers in their ranks, or a bolter gun line for the Imperial Fists. In general, usually at least some form of balance tends to work a bit better in game rather than going all in on just one strategy. It often might be best to have at least some stealthy and infiltration type units, some big guns to take down enemy hard hitters, and usually at least some counter charge melee threats, though you definitely can have all of those and still skew really quite heavily to one of the three, for example. Even if you're not 100% sure what you want out of it, I think it can be worth just putting an army list together, can just help get you a better idea of the basic building blocks of the army, and maybe just having a rough initial plan of what you might start aiming towards, although no doubt when you play games and get more experience with the force, you realise that what you might have initially thought you might not particularly want, or you might want to adapt plans, and that's part of the process. Obviously, to actually mess around with army lists and building rules and things, you need to acquire the rules in the first place, and currently the official source of that is Codex Space Marines, this fairly hefty tome here at £35, €45 Euros or $60, standard prices for Games Workshop's Codex books, though this one is a little bit bigger than most given that Space Marines just have so many units, so it has more pages in. This one has supplanted the initially free digital index that Games Workshop came out with at the start of 10th edition, so it's kind of sad that there's no longer free access to rules directly from Games Workshop, and if you want to use the Warhammer app, you still need this book to input the codex code if you want to access the rules for the units. There are unofficial ways that exist to see the 40k rules, Warhopedia generally documents everything that Games Workshop comes out with, and Battlescribe is a good army list building tool, both of those completely unofficial, and I'm sure Games Workshop would shut them down if they could, but are both really quite widely used and generally tend to be pretty accurate. Another option for access to the rules is these datasheet cards that Games Workshop also sells, can be kind of handy as a tactile reference thing to have in game. I bear in mind that these are generally just the datasheets and don't give you the full rules out of the codex with all the detachments and things, but seem to be at least fairly popular for quick reference. They are perhaps a bit handier just to be able to bring along the cards that are relevant to your army, as opposed to take the entire deck everywhere. Otherwise, if you're playing one of the more divergent chapters, like Blood Angels, Dark Angels, or Space Wolves or the like, they also have rules that are in the digitally downloadable indexes, and they're found in the download section of the Warhammer Community webpage. That's where you can find profiles for things like Blood Angels Sanguinary Guard or Space Wolves Thunder Wolf Cavalry and their faction unique units. Eventually they'll be superseded by their own supplement codex books, which will be a bit annoying for those factions as it basically means to have the full rules, you both have to get the core book and one of these supplement books. 
Finally, there are a few other rules bits that you can find on that same download section. There's the Combat Patrol rules for Space Marines, which you can find if you want to use one of the actual Combat Patrol box sets, and also the Legends rules for things that got removed from the game, various Firstborn units and some of the things that were more classically in the Horus Heresy, things like Leviathan or Contempt of Dreadnoughts. Otherwise, for things to plan and get worked out, it's probably a good idea to try and get your colour scheme worked out early in the day. I'd be tempted to go with one of the most normal looking space marines, maybe things like an Intercessor, Assault Intercessor, an Infernus Marine, or Hellblaster or something. They generally have a lot of elements that are going to be present on other models, so if you can work out them for the rank and file to start with, then it's maybe a better idea to start working up to fancier character miniatures and vehicles and bigger stuff. Space Marines have quite a lot of ways to go about painting them, some options using dry brushes or contrast paints, a lot of Games Workshop's box art tends to be the hard edge highlighting and shading type approach, that is really quite nice, though it does take quite a lot of time and effort to make look good. Getting on to the exciting bit though, and let's talk about ideas for first models to choose for the army. As mentioned for test models to paint up, I'd probably start with an infantry kit of some sort. Something fairly normal looking in power armour really isn't the worst. If you just wanted to dip your toe in, then maybe just one box of 10 space marines of one flavour or another. Though in general I think it's perhaps not the worst idea to start with one of Games Workshop's combat patrol box sets. Discount boxes that they have to get a lot of models in one place, slightly cheaper than you would be able to buy them for separately should you choose to. Quite a lot of them feature standard Space Marine Intercessors, that's your normal guys with the regular bolt rifles, somewhat supplanting Tactical Marines as the standard troop in the Space Marine Army these days. It's usually handy to have at least a few of them about in the army, generally good at holding objectives and skirmishing with enemy lighter troops. If you are looking to get a discount kit though, there really are quite a lot of them, as Combat Patrol boxes loosely themed at a whole bunch of the more divergent chapters, all of those are very relevant for core Space Marines themselves. There's the 40k starter sets which you would get instead of the regular Space Marine Combat Patrol, and the miniatures from the Leviathan box, and plenty more. Looking through the discount options, and the one that I would certainly discount straight away is Combat Patrol Space Marines. Looking at Games Workshop's web store, it looks like one of the most obvious places to start the faction, but this one I think is a bit of a deceptive product, as it's basically the exact same as a couple of other kits that they sell, but slightly more expensive, and you get fewer models. It's basically directly redundant to buying a starter box and a librarian separately. This one comes with the newer Furnace Marines from the Leviathan box set, five monopose Terminators, and two Terminator characters, and as well as being directly redundant to other box sets, it's just not really the best deal in the first place. There are fewer miniatures than most combat patrols that you'd get. The models, while nice, are all monopose, so it's not like you get the different options for, say, equipping the Terminators with a Cyclone Missile Launcher if you'd want to. That's missing. Character-heavy boxes never really tend to be particularly better valued than some of the other ones. And it's even a Games Workshop web store only product, meaning that you can't get a discount from ordering from a third party seller that stocks Games Workshop's products and offers their customary discounts. If you do want the Combat Patrol Space Marines, then the actual way to get it is to pick up the standard Warhammer 40k starter set that you can see here. This one's £65, €85, Euros, or $110, and then buy the Space Marine Librarian individually. Between those two kits you've paid less than the Combat Patrol box costs, plus you've got all of these random Tyranids included for free, which could be interesting as a painting project or something, or you could just trade or sell if you want it. And also bear in mind the Ultimate Starter Set exists as well, if you're getting the Standard One plus the Librarian, and you did want a small hard copy rulebook plus a few bits of terrain, then you might want to look at that one instead, it's not really all that much more, though it depends on whether you want those extra bits. When you're buying 40k miniatures in general, I always tend to bring up in these videos that you should bear in mind the other ways that you can buy things, as well as just from Games Workshop. Direct from GW does tend to be the most reliable, but also the most expensive. If you buy the exact same things from local gaming stores, you generally tend to get around about 10-20% to off Games Workshop's prices, and that can add up really quite quickly with how expensive Warhammer is. There's a few links down in the video description below. Element Games in the UK, usually around about 15% off. Noble Knight in the USA has 8%, and Gap Games in Australia are around about 20 Anything bought through those links also helps to support all specs tactics as well, at no extra cost when you buy something. There's also the second-hand market as well. eBay is often worth a look. Space Marines in particular tends to have a lot of online things going. There tends to be good interest in them, and lots of stuff coming on the market, given that they're a really popular faction, so you get quite a lot of people exiting as well as entering them. There's plenty of cool stuff out there for 3D printing and third-party manufacturers as well, 
Lots of nice alternative sculpts for various power armoured space warriors. And it can be kind of handy to get custom bits as well. Say if you wanted some custom shoulder pads with different iconography on. Industrious unofficial 3D printers do tend to be fairly industrious with creating that kind of thing. Beyond the standard Space Marine Combat Patrol though, the Marines do have a massive amount of other options. For plenty of the same miniatures, with the Terminators, Infernus Marines and a few more, there's the Leviathan box set. This one's the launch box of 10th edition, and while it's sold out on Games Workshop's web store, there's still plenty of places that stock it, both Games Workshop stores and local gaming stores worldwide. This one's £150, €200 Euros, or $250, but is generally seen as one of the best deals that Games Workshop's ever done, at least by their own standards. Around about a thousand points worth of Space Marines, plus plenty of Tyranids as well. As well as places that actually stock the full box, you might want to look at places like eBay for this one. There'll be a lot of people out there selling one half of the box or the other, so that could be one way to get your hands on it if you didn't want all the Tyranids or attached stuff, and likely it's a bit cheaper than the overall price. They are all monopose miniatures, but really quite nice ones I think. Otherwise, there's a lot of more faction-specific combat patrol boxes, the Death Watch, Blood Angels, Space Wolves and Dark Angels ones, and even though they might be named for the sub-factions, don't let that put you off getting them for standard Space Marines. For the most part, the only actual difference between these and the standard Space Marine miniatures is they come with some additional shoulder pads that you can absolutely not use if you don't want to. The Death Watch one gets you some aggressors, some intercessors and a couple of characters, I'd say it's probably one of the lower value ones due to the overfocus on the character models to be honest. In particular the Lieutenant is one of the ones that's just very easily kit bashed out of other models. He just doesn't really look all that special for a character. The Blood Angels one I think is fairly well rounded though for a little space marine force. It's led by a psychic librarian, there's five intercessors, some sneaky incursors that you could also build as infiltrators. Again, some of the chunky Gravis armoured aggressors once more, and an impulsor transport as well. I think they're fairly interesting in game at the moment with their new cheaper points cost. Definitely doesn't have a particularly big Blood Angels feel, but I feel like this one's quite a nicely rounded force for starting Space Marines in general. The Space Wolves one, and perhaps a little bit less sold on. Ten Intercessors, five Reavers, an Invicta Tactical Warsuit, and a Wolfguard Battle Leader. This one is a bit more Space Wolf themed compared with the other characters. Perhaps mainly boils down to whether or not you want the Invicta Warsuit. It is quite a fun model. This one's generally perhaps seen as one of the slightly less desirable ones though. Lastly, for the faction specific combat patrols, there's the Dark Angels box set. This one's got a great big hulking Redemptor Dreadnought, three Inceptors, five Intercessors and a Chaplain. This one's kind of interesting as it doesn't really get you that many models or really that big a discount compared with buying them separately. Though I would say that again the unit mix is really quite a nice one. At least recently Redemptor Dreadnoughts have been consistently very good in game for really quite a long time now and Inceptors are having a good time of it as well. I feel like perhaps in particular between this one and the Blood Angels box set you could have quite a good core to a Space Marine army going on. Otherwise out there in the Space Marine range, there's also this thing called the Vanguard Task Force. This one is kind of representing the old Space Marine start collecting box. A bunch of miniatures that originally came out in a box set called Shadow Spear a while back. And now you get these sneaky Phobos style marines for either £85, €110 Euros, or $140. It is direct from Games Workshop's web store only, so you can't get third party discounts on this one. And you get a bunch of monopose infiltrators. Three Eliminators armed just with the Bolt Sniper Rifles, three Jump Pack Suppressors, which is the only way that you can get those guys still, plus a Furbot's Lieutenant. Again, for the amount of plastic that you get, I don't think that this one's too bad. It definitely beats out a few of the Combat Patrol box sets for how many models that you get. And despite it maybe comparing poorly with previous versions of Combat Patrol Space Marines, I still say that this one's probably got a similar sort of value to the other Combat Patrol box sets if you're looking to start maybe a Raven Guard themed force or just want to add some stealthy infiltrating Space Marines to the mix. If you can find the old Combat Patrol Space Marines anywhere, then it certainly is worth a look. It basically came with the same things but also an Impulsor thrown in as well. It's no longer sold by Games Workshop, but there were a lot of them made. You might find them occasionally from third party sellers or second hand. Otherwise, just for a few other thoughts with collecting Space Marines, it might sometimes be worth bearing in mind just how many points cost each unit that you're buying costs in game. Some things tend to have a lot more of a high points cost for the money spent on them, say things like Hellblasters or Rebute Gilliman both do quite well. If you're trying to quickly build a force towards say 2000 points or some arbitrary total, then things like that can help out quite a bit alongside all the discount boxes.
kit bashes can be helpful. There's plenty of options for small value savings here. Say if you manage to make some space marines into a sort that Games Workshop would usually charge you more for. Perhaps classic options are taking more standard issue space marines and then using parts in your spares box and then creating some fancier models out of them. Maybe taking things like an assault intercessor and with a few spare parts with some veteran kits you might be able to create some primaris lieutenants or something like that. Or you only need some spare sword shields and maybe a few loincloths and bits to make them into blade guard veterans. Or get your hands on some jump packs from somewhere and you can make them into, say, the jump intercessors. Games Workshop does sell a set of jump packs on their web store, which could be quite nice for a simple kit bash to make those a little bit more cheaply if you don't want the fancy models that Games Workshop just came out with. The Space Marine range has quite a lot of upgrade sprues available as well. These are generally a nice enough option but tend to be fairly pricey for what you get, I think. Say for example on the left here, that's the one for the Dark Angels. You get a couple of those in the Dark Angels Combat Patrol should you be interested. I feel that's the amount that Games Workshop charges for them, which is usually around about £10 or so. You just really don't get all that much plastic for your money. And if you're going for sculpted shoulder pads on every single Space Marine in the Force, that is going to add a significant cost to your collection. Might not matter too much if you're only planning on a small army or you've got plenty of money to throw at the project, but you might be better off just applying chapter symbols with transfers and things. Out of the upgrade sprues, I maybe have a bit more time for the Black Templar one. As you can see on the right here, that one at least gives you a fair amount more stuff. And you could also look into Forge World Heresy range if you wanted yet more chapter goodies. They do have a bunch of aesthetic options that could be used pretty easily in 40k. Anything from character specific miniatures to shoulder pad upgrades and things like that. Talking of which, if you did want a very off-the-wall Space Marine army, you could go down the path of the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box set. This one's £185, $310, or €240, Euros, and could be a slightly weird option for getting quite a big Space Marine force off the ground if you want it. Despite a big buying cost, that's actually not too bad for getting as many points of Space Marine army here. You get basically 40 guys with bolters, 10 terminators, a Spartan tank that you could perhaps use as a land raider, and a Contempt of Dreadnought that you could perhaps just use as a more standard Dreadnought. If you wanted an interesting Heresy Aesthetic Firstborn Armour type vibe, it could be potentially a very cheap way to get a lot of Marines on the table. There could be a bit of a contrast between them and more contemporary Primaris type units that might look a little bit odd together next to each other. Overall, there's an absolutely enormous amount of ways to go with getting first miniatures onto the table and what exactly you choose to do with them. Overall, I'd start with one of those options, likely one of the combat patrols, like say this Dark Angels one perhaps. Get the miniatures and paint them up in your own chapter's colour scheme, and potentially even get a few games in right then and there. You can use the combat patrol rule set and the Dark Angels rules for your first ventures into Space Marines perhaps. Then around the core of the force, I'd probably expand to one of the other discount options. Space Marines are kind of lucky to have quite so many. Maybe some interesting heavy damage dealers like some big guns or crack melee troops. I feel like a fair few of the box sets tend to be a little bit light on the raw power that they bring. And of course I'd have any units that is just particularly attracting you to collect the faction and you want in your army fairly high on the priority list as well. Anything that attracted you to Space Marines in the first part is going to give you a whole bunch of motivation to keep on going and get them painted up. When expanding from a core force, I think there's always a lot of scope for just collecting what you like the look of and what you like painting up. If you're planning on a gaming army, then I'd certainly have a bit of a nod to what's useful in the rules at the moment, but I would bear in mind that the 40k rules change over time, and what's absolutely amazing right now in game might well be kind of lacklustre in the future, so you do want to be picking things that are actually miniatures that you like and you want to have a new collection regardless. I would perhaps be aware of that a little bit with Space Marines, they have an enormous range so much that when Games Workshop flexes the points around from time to time, the very best things that they have to offer could change really quite significantly. You might have the new Optimum Space Marine army just be completely different to the previous. As mentioned, after getting a core force together though, I kind of feel like a lot of these combat patrol box sets and other discount things tend to focus on really quite a lot of normal guys with bolters. Not really unexpected, seeing as they're perhaps some of the most iconic things about the faction, but they're only really going to get you so far in game. Nice for beating up enemy light infantry, but aren't going to be that great against heavy things, so I'd focus on some big hitters with either some powerful guns to take down enemy tanks, or whole squads of things with power fist or damage 2 weapons, maybe things like terminators or blade guard veterans at the moment, some of the chapter specific units, or some heavy firepower infantry like say eradicators or hellblasters perhaps. I think you want at least some things that are going to be fairly scary no matter what target you point them at, 
perhaps for some currently slightly stronger units for codex space marines there are quite a lot of options and some of the absolute strongest things will definitely vary on which detachment or chapter that you pick but I feel like as a rough rule of thumb you can't go wrong with a fair few of these. Space marines have really quite a lot of nice forward deploy options, infiltrators, eliminators and scouts are all quite nice taking the midfield objectives before the game's even begun but probably just keep it to a few units and not go overboard. For some heavy tank killing firepower, the Ballistas and Redemptor Dreadnought are both nice, plus the Gladiator Lancer, Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner are all just generally efficient tanks. I feel like most of the time they aren't going to be a particularly bad choice. For generally scary infantry, Hellblasters, Eradicators, Blade Guard and Terminator are all okay. And for character support, I feel like most of them can have a role in the right squad. I do feel that Tech Marines are perhaps standout good value as the points stand right now and can support those powerful armoured choices above. Lieutenants are rather nice and kind of hard to go too far wrong with for leading squads and things. Lethal hits helps to round a unit out and helps them punch up against tough stuff a bit more. Most of the rest of the army really is quite playable though. There's maybe only a few things that kind of stand out bad right now. I feel like things like the Reavers and the Hammer 4 Bunker are particularly underwhelming. I'd say that Games Workshop still hasn't quite got tactical marines right. Just in case the vast waves of space marines weren't enough for you, then you can also add in things like allies and agents as well. Cheap inquisitorial henchman units can be handy enough to do secondary objectives and things for cheaper cost than any space marine units. Perhaps marginal gains compared with just running fairly cheap scouts though. Kalidus assassins can be quite fun to jump on and off the board doing secondary objectives and trying to assassinate enemy characters and mess with stratagems. And you can potentially include allied knights as well, maybe Canis Rex or a knight crusader or some supporting armagers to do a little bit of damage dealing in the midfield with some high objective control. I consider most of those as pretty reasonable allied choices for a space marine force, though absolutely by no means mandatory. As you go on collecting things, I'd probably have a rough 2000 point army goal in mind, I'd definitely be willing to shift and change it as you get more practice games in. I'd certainly be playing games as you go along, and getting a feel for what you like or don't like, or what does or doesn't work for you in practice with your playstyle. Finally getting onto those games themselves, and as mentioned gameplay does vary really quite a lot from force to force. The most common things I'd say for space marines is that they tend to be fairly elite, fairly good at bullying enemy lighter infantry, resilient to small arms and can handle themselves quite well against them in melee. And they perhaps generally tend to be at least somewhat aggressive, focusing a bit more on damage dealing than defence. The core space marine rule is Oath of Moment, that's one way you get to select one enemy unit and then all of your warriors that turn can re-roll their hit rolls against that target. Really quite a powerful damage buff when it could affect a whole load of your firepower, though it is a lot weaker than it was when 10th edition launched out of the index rules. Otherwise, for choice of detachments in Codex Space Marines, there's basically aimed to be one detachment that very loosely fits the theme of each one of the core chapters, so quite a lot of theoretical ways to play. There's a first company task force that's a bit more generic and focuses around Terminators and Veterans, at the moment, from first impressions, that's looking a bit weak compared with the rest. The Stormlance Force is sort of White Scars themed. That's assault units and mounted things, particularly focusing on things like Outrider bikes. The Vanguard Spearhead is loosely Raven Guard themed. That's Phobos and Guerrilla Warfare with things jumping on and off the board and doing sneaky tricks. There's the Firestorm Assault Force, which is vaguely Salamanders themed, close range firepower and oddly transport themed but with some powerful tricks for flamer weapons. That one does seem quite a fun one, though I do feel like you need some specific units with it with the transports. The Iron Storm Spearhead might be one of the ones that has the raw most power in game. That one's themed around space marine vehicles and heavy firepower with some big damage dealing rerolls. Seems pretty scary with a bunch of tech marines leading some very scary space marine firepower into battle. I feel like that might be a tournament staple. The Anvil Siege Force is the one that's themed around Imperial Fists. It's generally focused around static firepower. It does give some good damage dealing buffs to things that can remain static, but I feel like in 40k in general you often need to move around quite a bit, and that is going to limit its potential. Finally, there's the more tactical balanced Cladius Task Force with its iconic combat doctrines, allowing you to move and damage in three different ways. I still rate that one as a really quite strong option, and it's generally meant to be kind of tactically balanced and encourage both a bit of range and a bit of melee, which I think it does well. There's also all the different ones for the Divergent chapters as well, which I won't list here just due to brevity. For in-game power concerns, I feel like it's likely that one of the Divergent chapters is usually going to be one of the stronger ways to play Space Marines, just given access to a bigger unit roster, many of which tend to be quite strong, and don't really have any downsides for using those units in any of these formations. I definitely wouldn't overthink it too much though. 
if you're just starting out with an army, then it's going to be a lot more dependent on your own skill and partly access to miniatures for your army power initially. And that's definitely not something that I'd stress about whatsoever as you're getting going with a faction and just focus on getting in some fun games in. Finally, and just to round up, here's just one idea of a rough starter army list for Space Marines right now. This one's absolutely not supposed to be any sort of top tournament type list, but it's just loosely based around the starting point of the Blood Angels and Dark Angels combat patrols, plus the contents of Leviathan for Space Marines. There's a bunch of the miniatures from there, and then we've added in a few extra squads like some Hellblasters and a Repulsor Executioner. Leading the list is a Librarian, and he'd join one of the Hellblaster squads to give them a 4 plus invulnerable save, and they can dish out some firepower from the Impulsor maybe. There's an Apothecary Biologist who takes the Fire Discipline Enhancement from the Gladius Force that allows him to get extra hits on Sixes, and he joins the Big Aggressor Squad with the Bolt Storm Gauntlets, and they can put out a very very scary amount of firepower, and crazily so in Devastator Doctrine. There's then a Terminator Librarian who's joining the squad of Terminators from the Leviathan box. They can maybe try and deep strike in, perhaps use Rapid Ingress to get nice and close and guarantee a charge on their foe. I feel like the Terminator Librarian is quite good value for the buffs that he brings with his sustained hits for 75 points these days. Otherwise, to man the battle line and skirmish for objectives in the midfield, we've got a squad of Intercessors, another squad of Hellblasters, some Infernus Marines for some Overwatch threat, and some Stern Guard for some Devastating Wounds goodness. Ranging ahead of them will be an Infiltrator Squad. They can set up in the midfield and deny enemy deep striking on one objective, hopefully making sure that one point is nice and safe early in the game. Deep striking in from above, there'll be a unit of Inceptors with the Plasma Exterminators. They can drop very close to the enemy units, hopefully destroying something that thought it was safe, and can be quite a good unit for doing secondary objectives if you're playing with the mission deck. And then to do some heavy lifting and try and take down the enemy's biggest and baddest threats, there's a Redemptor Dreadnought, a Ballistus Dreadnought, and a Repulsor Executioner. All really quite big scary threats in their own right, should hopefully be able to focus down some enemy elites or enemy armour. And the Repulsor Executioner could even be used as a transport for the other squad of Hellblasters if it made sense. Obviously not super optimised or anything, but I feel like it's at least a fairly balanced list, with at least some good damage dealers and a few units to run around doing secondary objectives and things, and quite a few bodies for the primary objectives on the battle line. So anyway, I must admit that did turn into a bit of a long one in the end. Hope that at least some of that's been useful for trying to get a Space Marine army together, and feel free to let me know any thoughts or ideas that you might want to share with newer players as well. Loads to learn with the faction, and any other tips and tricks for when you're getting started are always appreciated. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics, and we'll try to keep a bunch of Space Marine content coming over the next few weeks or so, loads to unpack after the Codex has come out, and if you'd like something else to watch, then I'll leave a link to my Space Marine tier list, links down in the video description below. Hopefully should give at least a rough idea of some of the stronger and weaker units in the Codex right now. And finally, if you have enjoyed the video, or you found it useful at all, I would just like to mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep this content coming. Making videos like this does take really quite a lot of time and effort, and if you have been enjoying quite a bit, then any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, in any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.